hi welcome back today we are again talking about how to teach a child to read in 100 easy lessons i'm a former literacy specialist reading teacher reading interventionist director of literacy specialists i want to help you teach your child to read like an expert today we're going to be talking about the correct production of letter sounds or phonemes is the technical word as they're introduced in this book now you can find a chart on page 17 of the introduction that has all this information laid out for you but I think it's really helpful to just hear the sounds, how they're correctly pronounced. And I'll also mention like some troubleshooting with some of the sounds. So um, I was an ESL teacher, and so I have a lot of experience with uh, helping students who are forming sounds for the first time, uh, because maybe they don't have that phoneme in their home language. I'll give you some tricks on some of the more difficult sounds for either very young children or ESL kids to pronounce and how you can help them to make those sounds. So just some general principles, when you're introducing the sounds to your children, if they are continuous sounds, we're gonna stretch them out really long, longer than you think you should. This is not mm, this is mm, okay, about that long, mm. Do it with me so you get a sense of how long it is. Mm. For stop sounds, our first one we introduce is t. You're doing the opposite. You're trying to make it as short as possible. And what's important with stop sounds is to avoid adding a schwa or an uh sound at the end. So we call we call those uhs that teachers sometimes tend to add a schwa. And that makes it really hard for kids to read. So this is not t. This is t. You hear the difference? I'll do it again. T is adding a schwa. We don't want to teach that. T, t. That's doing it as cleanly as possible. The problem with adding schwa sounds is let's say you're teaching your kid to read and they get to the word bat and you've taught them with schwas. Well, they're going to sound out bat and they're going to say bat. Well, that's not a word. B -a -t. And then we teach them to hook the first and second bat. That's going to get them to the correct pronunciation. Okay. All right, so let's go through the sounds. The curriculum starts with some of the easiest sounds to produce and some of the most frequently used in English language. So we're gonna start with mmm. Okay, that's my turn. We'll do a my turn and then we'll do it together. So mmm. All right, let's do it together. Mmm. Oh yeah, also I'm gonna do timestamps for all of these so that you can easily find the ones you want. The second sound introduced is Let's do it together. And again, you're stretching it that long. When kids start to read words, it's really important that they're they're stretching those sounds out. And also when they get to the word reading, you're connecting the sounds together, going right from one into the other without a pause in between. So this would be sa not s a. Right? That's not going to help them with learning to decode. You want to teach them to really stretch out those sounds and to try not to stop in between sounds. And now we're on number three that gets introduced, which is ah. We teach the more formal looking ah that has the little hood because that helps it look more different from d. You'll notice that I'm referring to these letters by their sounds, not their names. That's because I've been teaching this curriculum and we don't use letter names until we get to the end of the book. So when I'm talking about these letters with my kids, I'm calling this a, ah, not a, because they haven't learned a. So ah, we teach the long e sound first. Now all the long sounds are gonna have their hat on to let us know that that's a long e sound and that hat stays on until the last few lessons of the curriculum when they're not gonna need it anymore. That support is gonna fall away. So this sound is e, Let's do it together. E. And again, if you forget any of these, you can come back to this video or look at the chart. It's gonna give you an example word like eat. So you can kind of check yourself. Okay, am I, am I saying it the right way? Again, our first stop sound, t. Nice and crisp, no schwa, no t. t. Try it, t. Good. This one, oh, this one gets taught incorrectly so often. Okay, this sound is Okay, if you wanna make it correctly, start saying a word that starts with this letter. Start saying the word 
breathe and really start and really stretch out the first sound. Maybe you're just saying it slowly. It is not er. This is not the phoneme er. That's di that's e r. That's different. So this is. This is one of the ones that's really tricky for kids at first. You can make it fun. You kind of help them by saying, okay, we're making a noise like a car revving its engine. You can help them produce this sound by having them start saying a word that's very familiar and then stretching it out. Let's say red. Um, anytime kids are having a hard time making sounds, point to your mouth, make sure their eyes are on your mouth and watching the, the shape of your lips and your tongue. The younger they are, the more they do that naturally. The older they are, the more you're gonna have to guide them to watch your mouth while you're speaking. My nephew has the speech thing where he says a woo sound for, for this letter. He says wed instead of red. But when we really focus and we, we focus up on this sound and he's watching me and really listening, he can get the sound even though he's still working on it in our reading lessons, that's going to eventually transfer over into his speech. So also good reading instruction can double as good speech instruction. Okay. D. This is one where it's really tempting to make a schwa sound. It's not duh. It's d. You'll notice that in the curriculum in the orthography also there's like a kind of an exaggerated stretched out belly on the d and that will distinguish it from the b which gets introduced much later on and um, also helps it makes it look uh, a little more different from the ah sound. So d. Try it. D. 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 Okay. My daughter was having a hard time with this one and um, something I do is I'll teach her like a word and a hand gesture to go along with one when she's having a hard time remembering a certain sound. So for this one we would go d d d deal She thought that was really cute. We'd go d d d deal and then that's how she learned this sound. Pairing a, a phoneme with a word and a gesture like that is um, a way of building schema around it, which helps kids remember it. So when you sort of attach a word and a hand gesture to a sound, it's called it's called building schema, and basically it's like the more associations you have with something, the easier it is to remember. So da 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 deal was what we did with this one. E Let's do it together. E this one is, this is a tricky vowel when you're teaching reading. It's a tricky vowel. Kids want to say eh. It's close, very close to eh. Sometimes they want to go e if they've learned I. It can get confusing. So the way I taught my kids is this is a mosquito bite. See? This little dot up here, I think it's a mosquito bite. And it's itchy. And we go itchy. And that's how we'd remember this phoneme. This one is, now it's important that, TH sound is taught joined together. Think about how brilliant that is. So the kids are learning to picture this as a whole. They're learning the combination as a whole. We Now in English, right, TH can be voiced or unvoiced. What that means is we can say math, that's unvoiced. If you touch your throat on an unvoiced sound, it doesn't vibrate. But that's not how we're gonna teach it here because the majority of words um, that kids need to know with TH, that, the, this, uh, when they're first starting to read, are voiced. Th -th -th. Try it again now. Th -th. Touch your throat and make sure it's vibrating. Th -th. And you can do that with your kids too if they're giving you th. You gotta make sure that they're, um, they're learning it first in a voiced way. So th -th. this, that, the. Okay, so voiced. Again, no schwa, just give me the k, not k. All right, you try it. Nice and crisp. The short vowel sound is taught, so that's ah. You can help kids make it, tell them to imagine a nice big wide mouth. We're opening our mouth wide for the doctor and saying ah. This is one where it really helps for them to watch your mouth because when you listen, it's hard to hear the difference between mm and n, mm, but visually it's very different. Mm, mm. Really exaggerate your mouth movements as you're producing the sounds that will help your kids. So show your show your kids what your tongue is doing. Mm. 
your tongue touches the top of your mouth. You can even describe that to them if they're really having a hard time making the sound. Mm, and really show them what your mouth is doing. Again, I love the exaggerated hood on this letter is gonna help kids confusing it with when they're first starting to learn. So this is Kids will mix this up with, right? So I tell them, teeth on your bottom lip, teeth on your bottom lip and blow. Uh, the short vowel sound of this letter is taught, so it's uh. Um, when I taught middle school and we would, and I was teaching middle school kids with dyslexia phonics, we would always say underwear. <laughs> To remember it because that's funny and again it being funny builds schema and helps them remember it so uh okay this is ooh. again this is one that i hear teachers teach wrong all the time they might say l or la it's ooh. start saying the word what word do they give us here for this one pow I don't like that. I always like to teach a word that where you start with the sound. So like, let's say it starts saying the word lollipop, lollipop. And this is another one where they need to see your tongue L and have them show you that, that, you know, open your mouth. Let me see your tongue is on the top of your t top of your mouth. L this one often frequently mistaught. It's like this starts, start saying the word when, when when okay the sound is it's not ooh it's we don't say when we say when stretch stressing these small things when you're teaching phonics and phonemes is so important by the way i haven't explained yet the difference between phonics and phonemes phoneme is the sound phonics is learning to associate the sound with the letter so right now we're practicing phonics. We're saying the phonemes we associate with each letter. When you're doing those early phonemic awareness practices in the book where the kids are just repeating your words, they're repeating your sounds, you really want to be stressing that they're making the sounds correctly because that's laying the foundation for them later being able to read the words correctly. All right, another one that people tend to end, add schwa's to g, g not guh, g, g, g. One that's fun to teach kids with this is the Tony the Tiger, g, 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 great, right? So g, 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 great. This I love, capital I is taught just as the word I. So this is just introduced as a word because we want them to start reading stories at this point, this comes around less than 30-ish. Um, then we want them to start reading stories with the word I. So you just teach them this as a word. You say, this is a word, this word is I, what word I, and you know, I, and it's I. That's it, they're not sounding out with this. They're, this is just, they learn the word I as a standalone word. Shh, that's one of the easiest sounds. At this point in the curriculum, they are introduced to the long A sound. So it's got his hat on. My daughter just got to this part of the curriculum and we learn A, so A. Your turn, let's do it together. A, very good. Okay, this is taught, I'm pretty sure, as a stop sound, yeah. So it just is a short sound, don't have them stretch it out. No, just breath. Same as the C sound that is taught. They will learn later. They learn the exception to the C rule when, when C is followed by E or I. It says that's for like fourth grade. This letter is the long vowel sound of our ah sound, right? So this is just O. Oh. So now you get to say the letter name. O. Oh. Mm. This one is difficult for ESL kids coming from Spanish speaking background because the sound is not in Spanish. So um, it's actually though the same sound as just voice. Um, so if your kid can say, just tell them to touch their throat and add in their voice. So it's, you can try it. 
Mm. All right. So make sure they're, um, what you want to watch for to make sure they're um, pronouncing it correctly is that their teeth is on their bottom lip. Mm. And they're voicing it. Your turn. Not puh. That's a schwa. Okay, at this point in the curriculum, students start learning vowel combinations and they're no, they're no longer being connected. So kids are learning to look at two separate letters as a unit and they're no longer connected. This is R. Whenever A is followed by R, it changes it. And it's R and you teach it obviously like a pirate, right? R. Okay. Nice and short. Um, interestingly, j is just voiced ch, so we haven't gotten there yet, but ch, come, that's why ch comes from it first, because j is actually harder. If you can do ch, you can do j. All the way back here, we've learned so many letters, and it's finally time to learn the short vowel version of our um, E letter. So we learned the long vowel first, and now we're ready to learn a. Uh, and the one that I always teach with this word is elephant. Elephant. Okay. And all the way like 50 or 80 lessons. What, what lesson is this? 50 lessons about after they've learned D is when they learn B to avoid confusion. So this is B. They're finally ready to learn it. B. At this point, they should have mastered the hell out of D. That is good. The fact that they're going to be so strong in D is going to help them to learn B. This is why, again, I would not recommend pairing this curriculum with other phonics curriculums because other phonics curriculums often teach B first. And so then, oh, they're going to get so confused. And all that beautiful instructional design that's keeping these two sounds far apart is going to go right out the window. This is taught as one sound, ing, ing. Now look at this, this is very, very clever. The long, remember we learned capital I is one word? Well, the long I sound, they added a little foot to it, so it's, it looks a lot like that I we learned as a word, and it's the same sound, I. So now we're ready to learn the long I sound. Uh, this one is another one frequently mistaught by teachers. This is, uh, we don't teach Y, we don't touch E, it's ye, ye. Start saying the word yes, yes. You don't say yes, you don't say Y, yes. You say yes, so that's the sound ye. We get another R controlled vowel. Err, err, and this one is connected, but AR isn't, which is interesting, but um, err, the R, that's, these are called R control vowels. So for OO, the sound you learn first is ooh, ooh, like moon, or boo, um, and the other OO sound is taught later because it's more, and that's because the ooh sound is more frequently the one associated. And notice the two O's are connected, saying to kids, okay, this is, we're looking for this pattern of when two are together, it's ooh. The capital J is taught, you'll notice, to avoid confusing it with I, right? So um, again, very clever, Siegfried. This letter is J. And again, if kids are having a hard time with it, they've already mastered J by this point. So they're just learning the voiced version of ch, j, j, j. WH is taught together as exactly the same as W by itself. So again, why, why, Okay, have your word. On tricky ones like this, you have the, your word and just start by saying that word slowly that you can check yourself on. And again, there's a list of the words that correctly use these sounds um, in the book on page 17. The long, the long Y sound is finally taught here and it's I, it's not Y. So as in the word my, you're teaching I. 
the long U sound is finally taught as you, as in the word use, you. Finally, we get to Q. Um, and Q, I always teach as K-W. Okay, so it's the K sound and the W sound. The A good word to think about is quick. Quick. So actually, um, this is an interesting sound because it starts with a stop sound, k, and then it's the s sound together. So it actually ends up, you pronounce it as a continuous sound. K, z, z. Kids are going to have a hard time with this one. It's not in every language. It's just a voiced s sound. It's just a voiced s sound. So if they can do s, tell them to touch their throat and make it voiced. Z. E-A is one of the last vowel combinations we learn, and it's E-A becomes E. Same as our long E sound. A-I is another vowel combination, and it makes the long A sound. A. And O-U has um, several different sounds that it can pronounce, but the most common one is taught, and that's ow, as in loud. So your reference chart on page 17 is there for you. This video is hopefully there for you. Um, if you've never taught phonics before, I'd recommend running through this video maybe, um, you know, a couple times uh, before you get started. Or you could just make sure before you're introducing a new sound, when you see, ooh, there's a new sound coming up in this lesson, you can come back to this video, find that um, sound in the timestamps and practice it with me a few times to make sure you're pronouncing it correctly. I hope this was helpful for you. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos that will help you um, with using the book Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. And good luck teaching your kids reading. I'll see you next time. Bye.